hello again this is video number four and this is the last section of unit one so in this video I would be explaining what is the production possibility curve and we can denote it as PPC you should be capable to define it these are our objectives you need to define a PPC we need to draw it and interpret it and we need to explain the importance of the points on the graph and we need to analyze the causes and consequences of movements along and shifts of the curve now don't worry we will explain movement along the curve and shifting of the curve okay either to the left or to the right now i will start off by uh, so at the end of the lesson this would be your success criteria you should be capable of defining what a production possibility curve is you need to explain this is uh, i would just um, draw it for now um, briefly explain it here we have let's say the production of good x here we have the production of good y so mainly we're talking about two different goods it shows us the different combination of resources that can be used in order to produce goods and services so for example with the 50 workers that i have they could either produce uh, 20 units of good x and um, 20 units of good y if they want to produce more of good y so let's say here it means they need to produce less of good x they are giving up good x in order to produce more of y so when i'm graphing it like that don't worry i will explain it in details later on this is just an intro uh, introduction for the uh, for this section so when i'm saying you need to explain points under and beyond a PPC so you need to explain if we have a point here point a what does it mean if we have a point here point C what does it mean and the points on the curve itself what do they mean okay and uh, movements along the curve it's the movement from this point the point Z to point X okay and the shifts as we said either to the left so inward or outward I'm sorry for the mess, you guys. Um, here. This is the definition. A production possibility curve. It shows all the combinations of two goods which can be produced or provided if all resources are being used efficiently. So, before we start explaining the graph, I told you I have a firm. And in my firm, I am employing 50 workers and these 50 workers let's say i produce furniture so they could uh, i produce tables both tables and chairs i want to see how many and i have uh, 1000 meters also uh, of wood okay so these are the available resources that i have i want to see how many tables and how many chairs i can produce with the available resources okay so the production possibility curve uh it shows the maximum combined output in the example that i gave you it was tables and chairs of two or more products a firm or an entire economy can produce with the available resources and the resources in the example that i gave you it was 50 workers and also it was a um, thousand meters of wood uh, resources should be you be, are being used efficiently if they are producing their maximum output yeah the 50 workers should be working their full time from a to three without wasting time let's say okay so they are being uh, our resources are being used efficiently but because resources are limited or scarce producing more of one product means we are producing less of the other so if i want to produce with the amount of resources that i had in the example i was capable of producing 20 tables 
and 30 chairs only okay so if i want to produce more chairs let's say i want to produce 40 chairs it means i need to produce less tables and this is what we will see on the curve on the production possibility curve so the ppcs or the production possibility curve are therefore a, therefore a useful way of showing the opportunity cost of producing more of one product so more chairs in terms of how much another and in this example it was table uh, tables uh, were given up okay so how many tables should i give up in order to produce more chairs or vice versa let's see the shape of the ppc now when i was um, reading out the objectives i already gave you a brief graph about it the curve is bowed out from the origin it is a downward sloping curve okay it is a downward sloping curve and uh, it's bowed out from the origin as we move away from the origin the economy must give up more of the alternative so let's take a look at this uh, it's a more realistic example this one here i have a firm i'm talking about the firm they are producing remember it's a, uh, they're producing two different goods so here i have cars here i have trucks now does it matter if you put trucks here or cars here no it doesn't matter but we are always about uh, we are always talking about two different outputs so two different things being produced now if i want to produce 20 more trucks let's say originally i was at 0.8 and this is 100 okay um i want to produce 20 more trucks what happened i had to give up cars so at point a i was producing 80 trucks and i was producing 60 cars I got these numbers from the graph 60 cars and 80 trucks this was point a now if the firm decided to produce more uh, trucks 20 more trucks they had uh, so which is point b they had to give up 10 cars so they are producing 50 cars so our opportunity cost in this example would be 10 cars okay so what did they give up this is what their opportunity cost will be this is another example so as we said when we are talking about production possibility curve it is uh, a use uh, it is um, showing when the firm is producing or the economy so in this example it was a firm here it was a firm producing either cars or trucks and now i want to talk about an economy same concept okay so the economy uh, it could either be producing consumer goods or capital goods the consumer durable or non-durable goods or capital goods such as machines equipment and buildings now let's say originally I was here uh, no let's say here uh, this is point B and this is the original point point a so originally the economy was producing 50 consumer goods and uh, 60 capital goods this is 60 okay now if the economy needs to produce 15 more of consumer goods so plus 15 they want to produce 65 consumer goods and not 50 anymore then it means they will need to give up they are giving up minus 10 capital goods so what is the opportunity cost in this example it would be 10 capital goods okay now let's have another example uh, another question for this um, example let's look at the slide what is the opportunity cost of producing 15 more ton uh, sorry let's change this let's say um, 10 more 
tons of not consumer goods anymore i want capital goods so originally this was the point and i want to reach point b so in order to produce 10 more capital goods what is our opportunity cost what did the economy give up they had to give up 15 tons of consumer goods okay this is what they had to give up in order to reach point b so i want to be producing at an effective level i want to be producing effectively in order to do that the PPF is drawn on the assumption that all the resources are fully and efficiently employed. So I'm not saying any worker is absent or we cannot get these machines. Okay. Therefore, any point on the PPF is an efficient product. We call it productive efficiency. So this is the curve that we have here. All the points on this red curve, they are efficient. Okay. So I'm using my resources to the maximum. I am not wasting any resources. Okay? Now, any point below here, under the PPC, this is point C here, it is, I can produce it, the, the economy can produce 30 cons tons of consumer goods and 30 tons of capital goods, but they were not producing at full, cap uh, full capacity. So this, I say, it is an inefficient point. So probably here, the workers are wasting time. They could have produced more and still they're getting their salaries. Any point outside the curve, point X, it is impossible. Point X here, the economy cannot produce 70 tons of consumer goods or 80 tons of consumer goods and 80 tons of capital goods. It is impossible. With the amount of resources that the economy has, they cannot produce that. In order to do that, what the economy can do is hire probably more labor. When they hire more labor, they have more resources so yes probably they could start producing point x let's see when will the curve so this is my original curve let's see when the curve will shift outward okay shifting outward it means the economy can produce more at each and every uh, at every uh, level so here for example they were producing 50 capital goods and 70 consumer goods. Now, if they increase the amount of resources that they have, the economy can produce more. Okay, they can produce 50, let's say, capital goods, but they can produce 90 uh, consumer goods, so more. They were producing previously 70, now they can produce 90. What will make our PPC shift outward or to the right? If we discover more resources, if we have um, better resources, we educate our workers, there is growth, there is more population, better technology and machines. Uh, companies are investing more in machines because, as we know, machines produce faster and more effectively than labor. Okay? Now, what will cause the PPC to shift inward? What will make it shift to the left? What w we will be producing less here. So, originally, this was my curve. Let's say I have point A. At point A here, I was producing 20 of product A and 10 of product B. What will cause this decrease? When will I produce 20, let's say, of product A and um, 5 of product B when the opposite thing happens? So here, I will have less resources. I will have uh, less education, I will not have technology, all of these factors will cause my PPC to shift to the left. Now, this is, an, uh, this is a summary, I will post it on Edmodo for you to solve, to check your understanding, and also I will post classified past papers. Thank you, don't forget to ask any question if you have.